Hi, I'm Hyde Moffat, and I'm here on behalf of Greenhawk. I'd like to give you guys a few exercises to work on throughout the winter. Exercises that will both improve your control, your position, and hopefully strengthen your horses so that you're ready for the 2016 show season. The first exercise we're going to start with today is trot poles. Very simple, straightforward exercise, but it helps horses to develop a rhythmical sense of uh, movement. It helps them to strengthen their movement through range of motion, and it helps the rider to develop balance and solidity in their position. When you're approaching the trot poles, you'd like to present in a nice straight line, making sure that you're hitting very much the center of each rail. It's very important that you give guidance to the horse so that it knows exactly where you want it to go and that you're not aiming at the whole rail but at a very narrow section in the center. This allows the horse to focus on the middle of the, the rail and aids them in finding a distance to those rails. Your goal is that the trot remains very, very smooth and even, that the horse takes the same step over each rail as they uh, progress through the exercise. As a rider, your weight will stay in your heel, your eye will stay up on a straight line, and you will allow the horse to use its head and neck by being soft and relaxed in your elbow, following the movement of the horse's mouth as they go through the rails. This is an exercise that I pull out frequently with students and in clinic formats, and it consists of two rails spaced several strides apart. The actual distance between rails isn't terribly important. In fact, it's not a bad idea to give yourself a little bit of extra space. The rails can be used in many, many different ways. One of the things that uh, I would recommend starting with is that you present the rails in a nice straight line and you maintain one rhythmical gait all the way through the exercise, making sure to hit the center of both rails. That can be done at a walk, it can be done at a trot, and it can be done at a canter. That's the basis for everything that you're going to do here. As you progress and find that it's very easy to maintain that straight line and that rhythm as you do this exercise, you can then change it up a little bit to make it ever so slightly more difficult. You're going to start by maybe trotting in over the first rail and doing a downwards transition to a walk and walking out over the second rail. Your goal is to be able to ask for the transition and have your horse respond exactly the same way as when you're asking for the transition elsewhere in the ring on the flat. If you'd like for your flat work to carry over to your jumping exercises, it's very important that you use all your aids in the same way so that your horse responds in the same way. If you ask a horse to do things differently when you start jumping, you can expect to have different control. So make sure that you train in a way that allows you to ask exactly the same way whether you're on the flat somewhere uh, in the ring, perhaps out on a hack, or in the middle of a jumping exercise. As you find that the transitions become more and more similar each time, you can then make the, the second transition within the space of those rails. Perhaps you trot in, come back to a walk, and then pick up a trot prior to getting to the second rail. It's really important that you maintain the quality of each downwards transition and upwards transition. It's not necessary that you get the exercise done quickly. It's much more important the quality with which the exercise is done. The two rail exercise can also be used to gauge stride control for riders. You should start again with something very simple. Canter in and do whatever number of strides shows up most naturally. If that is four, five, or six strides, that's great. Repeat it several times. You'd like to be able to do the same thing the same way every time. When you're comfortable cantering through those rails on one rhythm and doing that number of strides, attempt to change it. Canter in at one pace and add a stride, shortening the step all the way down the exercise. Remember that a shorten is no different than a downwards transition. You're asking the horse to go from one speed to another, only this time, instead of going between gates, you're just asking them to compress their body. 
Remember to grow tall in your position with a deep breath, your leg wrapping down and around your horse's sides, supporting them, encouraging them to remain both straight and bring their hind legs up underneath their body. Those actions all occur before one closes their fingers to finish their half halt, and hopefully the result is that a horse shortens its stride actively and with rhythm. The exercise I have set over here involves three rails, or cavalettis, set at the quarter mark of the circle. Your goal when you're doing an exercise like this, again, is to start very simple. Perhaps you trot and hit the center of each rail each time you go around the circle. You should continue to do that until you're able to find the center of each rail every time, and that it starts to happen smoothly and in rhythm. As you get better at that, you can then progress possibly to a canter. All of these exercises should be started in the most simple way possible. Make sure that you're, you feel comfortable, make sure that you feel capable, even if it's just at the walk to start, that you can give direction to the horse so that it understands exactly where you want it to go. When that becomes easy, progress to the trot, and the same goal of finding the center of each rail with rhythm is, is still applicable. When you're comfortable at the trot, progress to the canter. This is an extremely difficult exercise, and if you need to remove one of the rails to start, there's nothing wrong with that. Make it easy for the horse to understand where you'd like it to go, and don't be afraid if this exercise doesn't necessarily go as planned the first time. It's far more difficult than it looks. As you pick up the canter and enter the exercise, your horse needs to be focused on the center of the rail that you're presenting. They will jump the rail and the rider needs to be very careful that their arm is elastic and able to follow the motion of the horse's uh, movement as it goes across the rail. Even though it's only a couple of inches high, uh, the horse will need to stretch and reach using its head and neck if it's to make a, a larger motion with its legs. The rider is very, very aware of this and allows their arm to follow forward and follow that motion. That allows the horse to land in balance and make uh, allow the rider to guide it through the next turn and present the second rail in a similar manner to the way they've presented the first rail. Horse's nose to the center, finding the very middle of that jump. Again, the process repeats itself to the third rail. As I said before, this is difficult and don't feel bad if it gets a little bit messed up. If you find that your canter is uh, disappearing, maybe the rhythm is starting to change, things are not working the way you had planned, don't be afraid to make a transition back to a trot or a walk, regroup and restart. If things go terribly, you can always back it up to the trot again where you're able to uh, have a little bit more control, where things happen just a little more slowly. Reinstall that you'd like to hit the center of each of those jumps on a smooth, even bend with rhythm. When you feel good again, by all means, try it at the canter. Remember, goal is to be straight to each rail and with a rhythmical, even canter all the way around the circle. Thanks again for watching today. I hope I've given you a couple of exercises that may make winter, the long boring winter, a little bit easier to take. Please feel free, if you have any difficulty with any of these exercises, to consult with your local professional. They will be more than happy to provide you guidance in uh, perfecting these exercises.